Remember how previously we said that um, research is the means through which we generate theories and that the raison d'etre, that the very reason we have research is to refine a theory to the extent to which it can approximate reality. Now, there are two ways in which one can do that. One way is by testing the theory. This is called a deduction. In this way, the researcher first presupposes an explicit conceptual and theoretical structure, in other words, a theory, attempting to explain the phenomenon the researcher wishes to investigate, and then attempts to examine this theory through new empirical observations. Taking as an example the theory we looked at earlier and isolating the relationship between motivation and performance and assuming that to be, say, a, a mini-theory within the wider theory of motivation, a deductive researcher could take this relationship and test it against new data. So say if this theory um, by Porter and Lower was developed using data, say, from uh, the banking industry, somebody else could take that theory and test it with um, empirical data from a very, very different industry. Let's say a hospital. Let's say that somebody wishes to see if that relationship established by Porter and Lawler is still valid in a hospital. Another way of doing things, however, is through induction. In this way, the inductive researcher does not require a theory to start with. The inductive researcher starts from observations and develops a theory. So see the theory which comes to the deductive researcher as a given for them to test does not come out of thin air. It is produced through inductive research. So let's look at induction and deduction um, in parallel and compare the two. The deductive approach starts with theory and ends up with a revised version of that theory. The inductive approach does not start with theory, but just as with the deductive one, ends up with a theory. So the end point is the same for both. The start point, however, is different. The inductive approach starts with the data, starts with a phenomenon in its natural environment, whereas the deductive one starts with the theory already developed by perhaps an inductive researcher and then tests the theory in a different environment using a different kind of data. Now, the two approaches do not need to be seen as fundamentally different. They are different, but they could be seen as being part of the same research continuum. In this continuum, theory building through the induction approach can be seen to be the first stage of developing good explanations about the world. Such explanations and theories developed inductively out of systematic empirical research, usually referred to as post-factum or grounded theories, are based on observation and experience. They are not simply armchair speculations about the world. They are based on empirical evidence and they start right here down uh, with observations through research processes and generating a theory. The deductive approach starts right at this point and it could well be in the body of the same research project or one research project could stop here entirely and another can start. So from here onwards we we'll have to do with deduction. So from theory through the research process applied to new observations. In this sense, the inductive and deductive approaches to research can be seen as complementary rather than competing in the context of the research process.